Hey there, game developers. It is I, Titan Hex. I'm back with a tutorial. This time, uh, I'm doing an impromptu one on getting organized. Uh, this is something I'm doing spur of the moment, so it's unscripted. The purpose of this is to sort of teach you how to use some diagramming flowchart and get organized with your game. Whenever you're working on something as complex or um, with as many moving parts as a video game has, it's good to be organized. It helps you clearly and confidently explain your game to others and tell them what you want done and how it's going to work. It also organizes it in your mind so that it all works. You can find errors and issues in the game you're trying to create when you document it and keep it um, organized and sort of laid out before you. So with that in mind, um, I am starting with the Diagram Designer software here. I've been using it for a while. I found it infinitely helpful. Um, flowchart software is sort of what it is, and it shows you the flow of the game and how each piece is connected and how everything works together. Um, it shows some of the linearity that a game might possess or the main cycles. Um, I also use it to plot out stories uh, and sort of show how elements are related to one another in a story, how characters, relationships work, and sort of keep track of tension, um, a whole bunch of just very important story things. Flow charting software is amazing for that. The other thing I use flow charting software for is level design. So it's great for level design. Uh, every level should flow together. There's connections between each level and using flowchart software I can keep track of that. So I'm going to show you some of those elements and what your project might look like with some flowcharting done. Um, so we're going to begin with this basic diagram. This is the core gameplay of my own game that I'm creating. It's called Five Towers um, and it has a very simple linear progress as you can see as each arrow flows into the next part. The big thing here is that you have some very simple processes. This is just one pretty much straight line. It's very clear. You start from the game title screen. Uh, the game sets up by generating a story and then using that story to create a hook that gets the player interested in the game. You then create a party and you begin in a town. So town one. You then proceed through the overworld after exiting the town and reach dungeon one. After reaching dungeon one, you proceed to the first dungeon boss, beat it, and then proceed through overworld to town two. This continues on for a while until finally you reach the climax at the tower, defeat the final boss, and start a new game. The, this allows you to customize your game, your next playthrough with some points. And then you go back to 1A, which is where the story is generated. And you play a brand new story with some of the generated parts, uh, with um, some of the randomized things. And then you spend your points to sort of build this story up a little bit more how you want it and to build up your power going through the next run. So it's a very simple process and I, I, I'm able to keep track of it using this. Um, this helped me just get organized and start getting organized. Uh, it's not a complex thing, but when I try to explain it to somebody, I can easily use this flowchart to tell them what the game is about uh, at its most core concept. So that's very helpful. The next thing that I use the diagram designer for is level design. So this is a clear breakdown of the first level. Um, you enter here, there's the entrance, it's room 1-1. It flows in to all these different other rooms um, until finally you reach the boss room at the end. So I use color coding to tell me which rooms are randomly generated. In the last diagram I also used color coding to tell me a little bit about what part of the story is taking place. Um, so those are just some of the ways that I manipulate the software to represent data that I wanted to show. A little technical there, but no worries. Um, colors are great for showing extra information. 
So now, this shows off a pretty clear path through the dungeon to reach the end. Um, it also shows off branching paths, and it also shows off extra choices the player can make. You then can ch use the software to show off levels. So as you can see, the level here this is the first room, uh, room 1-1, one -one, which is represented on the flowchart right here. So as you can see, the flowchart begins here, and it shows the path through the level to reach the next room. It shows you where the barriers are, um, and then it shows you an exit to room 1-7 and chest on the cliff. Um, sort of show off certain parts of how the level works, um, where chest placement is, where paths are. All levels are basically a flow from one entrance to another, from one entrance to an exit. Um, that's pretty much the sum of any level you create and this shows off that as well as the path to get from one entrance to the exit no matter what game you're creating every single game will have an entrance and an exit and a path to get to it otherwise the game ends and there's no nothing left to play uh, unless it's maybe a game over at which point you will replay the level until you reach the exit um, it's true to any game so with that, uh, I guess there's really not much to show off for the dungeon. Uh, it's just a simple process. However, I want to show off some of the extra information you can use that's kind of important. So this is the first town you start in. Uh, it is a pretty clear entrance that flows into an exit. I created the main path sort of go, went this way, and then I created a bunch of de delineating paths, which just branch off from that main path. Um, they go towards houses, a quest house, and some basic shops. Um, I started with the main path, and you can all see it all come together here. So this was that curving path, and these are the paths that sort of delineate off of it sort of branch around. Um, it's pretty easy to see this design, especially uh, these are the shops, these are the houses. You can sort of see it all come into play here. Uh, it's not perfect. There are definitely some parts that I changed around, um, but this is the still the gist of what I created. So one of the big things is that once I had this down, uh, I started to realize that the player doesn't have direction yet. The, the, the map and the level isn't showing them, hey, you need to go to here first. So I started to designate some red in order to show me the path that I want the player to take. I want the player to head to the weapon shops, the fighter dojo to pick up their skills, the spell shop to pick up their spells, the item shop to pick up some items and get familiar with the inn where they can heal and save. So then you have the houses. I wanted the player, the houses are just sort of uh, there for flavor, um, maybe a little bit of exposition about the area they're in. But I wanted the Quest Noble's house to be the main center that the player is sort of ushered over to because that's where they get their quest, um, which helps them get extra rewards, um, helps them put context on what they're doing, and gives them a little bit more to work with in the game. So I know I had these two paths that I wanted the player to be emphasized to the player. So I set them in red. I was like, these are the paths that I want the player to go to. And these are the parts where I, the branch, um, where I want the player to branch off and realize they need to go to it. So these little yellow markers are meant to tell the player to sort of, hey, check this area out. Hey, go down this path. Hey, come up here. Um, so those little yellow markers are meant to designate that and those can be done in like the npc so this yellow dot is going to be the first npc that the player sees maybe they tell them hey you should head towards the noble house to the s south east and the uh shops to the north not quite in such plain words but yeah definitely in that way i can also set up signs here to tell the player go this way before you leave town um, and i can also even set up a s town here or an exit um message in the exit that tells the player before you leave do this 
So these are just these little yellow dots tell the player, don't turn around, don't leave. Um, and I think that's an important thing. When you're telling the player to go somewhere, you, you want to make it clear to them where they need to go and why they and that it's important to go there. Not so much why, but that it's important. And if the player ignores those context clues, um, if the player ignores your obvious signals to do something before they leave, um, it's okay to punish them for that. It's okay to make them realize that they should have done what you wanted them to do. Um, you don't have to force a player to do something. I don't have to gate off the, the exit. The player can certainly go that way. But I want to make it clear that if the player just leaves towards the exit, they're going to be severely underpowered and that there's a good chance that they won't survive their encounters while out there. So that sort of sets that up. Uh, these paths sort of let me figure out what I'm doing and shows the importance of these parts of the map. I haven't placed them in except for here. I have some basic signs, but I need something clearly that's going to be more obvious than these signs so i'm working on that um, and this little information lets me do that i can't put a red line over here on this map because it would be too obvious the player would see it so that's kind of where i'm at uh that's why i use flowchart software and there's just some of the things that you can do with it there's plenty of things like i said you could start doing story stuff with it i imagine when i start brainstorming my own story i'm gonna put it together and see how well each element mixes if I can cut one part of a story and paste it onto another, uh, because that's a lot of what the random generation is meant to do, I can see if that works um, without having to write it out. I don't have to write out a big script. Um, I can just put the most important plot points and then tie them together. So that helps me do that. Um, this has been a breakdown of the diagram designer. Uh, and how useful it is for me. Hopefully you have, you come up with other methods. Uh, you can even write out things. Uh, writing definitely helps. Visual aids are almost a necessity. So make sure you have some way to visually represent the ideas of your game. Um, and make sure that you can also write them down. Um, that you can write down some of your ideas as well. That kind of organization will come in tenfold and that's what this entire tutorial has been about making sure that you're organized and this particular tool that will help you with organization i'm hoping that i can show off other tools for organization as i continue my development uh, please join me on my developers blog which is basically uh, i'm using twitch for that so every now and then i will give out helpful hints uh, but i do enjoy just hanging out and talking about games talking about the study material i use to create my games, um, to create my concepts, um, things that have taught me quite a bit. Um, I talk about ways that I design and things that help me. Um, and you are free to just chat about your game and we can have a cool discussion about it. So just join me on my Twitch whenever you get the uh, bug up your butt to do it. Uh, that would be twitch.tv forward slash Titan Hex. Always appreciate to have the company, and thanks again. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for you. Have a fantastic day.